Hello and welcome back to my free webinars. This time we'll be dealing with CFA level one equity. This time it's about equity. We'll be dealing with um, indexes. So I prepared something for you. Look at this. Look at this. There is the security market indexes that we'll be dealing with this time. Um, we'll be talking about index construction. That's the thing for now. Index construction um, needs a deep insight into index weighting, first of all, into index management. So we'll be talking about price weighting, equal weighting, market capitalization weighting, and fundamental weighting. We also need to understand what is rebalancing, what is reconstitution. All of this is um, very important when it comes to your next CFA level one exam. So let's start. Let us start. There are the questions, the questions I sent you. And those are, if I can just show them to you again on my website. Here they are. Here they are. Like, first of all, suppose stocks from the Business Valley, Securities, Stonehill Farms, and Uniromo developers described as follows. So there's price. There were prices at the beginning. And um, let's say there is a 10% increase in one single price, in one given price. Now, there is an effect. Of course, there is an effect. And the, the question is now, the percentage change in the price weighted, in the price, in the price weighted index, supposed, supposing that the divisor does not change, is best described as, if I can clarify this answer, either 1% or 2.6% or it is 3%. What do you think? What would you think? So <clears throat> what is a price index? If there is a price today and there was a price yesterday, or if there is a price today and there is going to be a price, uh, another a different price tomorrow, there's an, an absolute change in price in dollars and euros and anything, anything. And there's, of course, a relative change, a percentage change. And that's the one we'll be dealing with in this webinar, the percentage change. So question A, we need to further examine question A, question one, I'm sorry. And what's the answer to question one? So <clears throat> the price index, the price index is, equal to this. There is a sum of prices today in the first period and there's a sum of prices in the next period. Let's look it up. What's the sum of prices? 50, 60 and 40 and now there is a 10% price change. There is a 10% rise in the price of one single of one single share. So what's going to happen? That means if we can sum it up that there is 150 euros or $150 in period T, which gives us, if I can just write it down, the sum is 50 plus 60 plus 40 equal to 150. <clears throat> and the next period is different, of course. As I said, 50 plus 60 plus, not 40 any longer, but 10% higher, which means, and which gives us 44. So it's equal to 154. Now, if we divide by three, of course, 150 divided by three equals 50, the average price. And now this, divided by three gives us an average price of 51.33, which means that the price index, as we look at the, at the average prices is 51, is 51.33 minus 50. So the price of today minus the price given in the last period, divided by the price of this last period. So it's always um, looking at the last period. So the price change from the past to now divided by the past price, divided by the 
price of the pairs, uh, <clears throat> which is equal to 2.667% if we can round it to three decimal places after the comma, behind the comma, which gives us a true answer of B. B is the true answer because that's the, the answer <clears throat> to the price that the percent change in the price weighted index is 2.67%. That was that. And as we can look into it again, I can say, and we can say, like taking a look at this, at this mind map, there is several index construction methods. That's first of all, that's the price weighting. There's the price weighting methods. And second, there's the equal weighting methods. So what's the difference? What is the difference? I'll come to the next question right afterwards. The price index methods, very important. That could be your question in next CFA level one exam, right? <clears throat> so the weight, the weight of a given security, of a given constituent security is PI, the price of that security, divided by the, the sum of all prices when the index J runs from one to N. That's it. So we divide, we divide it by each and every single price by the sum of all given prices. That's the weight of the ith, of the ith, if I can call it this way, of the ith um, security. Now that's the weight. <clears throat> There's one single thing I'd like to stress, and that is talking about the divisor. What is a divisor and how can we change the divisor so that the index, that the price index is gonna stay the same? And that is, a different thing to know, a very important thing to, to see. Let's take a look at this. If we have a table and we take a look at three different securities. <clears throat> so there is the price. There's a price before the split. Is we want to stress a certain stock split the split, like for example, 30, 40, and 80. Which is as a sum, 150. And given the divisor of three, that means that the index, that the price index, of course, is 150 divided by three, which is equal to 50. So the price index is 50, first of all. The index value, first of all, is equal to 50. <clears throat> now the thing is, if there's a stock split, for example, a stock split of, what did I say? I think four to one, yes. Four to one here. There's a stock split in security B. And um, that means, that for each and every part, there is a different price. So if the price after the stock split is considered, price after the stock split, after the split, it's no more 40, it's of course 10. 30, 10, and 80, isn't it? The weight, the thing is that the weight is changed. 30 divided by 150 equals 20% equal to 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is the weight of security A. Now security B, 40 divided by 150 is equal to 26%. And here 50 to 53% for the last one equal to one, of course, as the, as the sum of all weights. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, the problem, the problem with the divisor, with, the, um, with this price weighted index can be seen very clearly. B 
because all the weights may change. All, all the weights will change because now it is 30, 10, and 80, which is no longer 150, but 120, which causes a problem because the divisor does not stand, does not stay um, three. The divisor does not stand, stay three because if it was three, then it was 100 and then it would be 120 divided by three equal to 40 and no longer equal to 50. So how do we have to change the divisor? And that's the question. And that could be your question as well, just as well in your next CFA level one exam. How do we change? How do we have to change the divisor in order not to change the price index? In order not to change the price index. And that is, so if we want to stay with 50, it is of course true to ask, to ask by what number do we need to divide 120 in order to get 50, right? So 120 divided by D divided by the divisor is equal to this price index, which means that now we get 2.4. So it changes from three to 2.4 and that's important. <clears throat> and that's important. Of course, the weights themselves, they change from 20% to 25%, from 26% to only 8%. And this one rises to 67%, again, equal to one. So that's important. The, the role of a stock split. If there's a stock split, we have to change the divisor in order not to change the price index. And that's an important issue. An important issue that could be a question just as well. Now, going back to my questions, going back here, question one we did already. Question two, suppose the following developments, development of value of stocks, Woldens. There is a number of shares, there's a price, and um, in period T, and there's a price in period T plus one. So the price weighted index, we don't look at the, at the we, we, we still look at the construction method of price indexes. And we want to take a look, we want to know the prices, the price weighted index for those stocks, if the divisor is equal to three, is best described as. Now, we just need to understand, we need, just need to, Compute, we just need to compute this. Is it 12%? Is it 11.4%? Or is it equal to 11%? What would you say? You just computed it, I guess, didn't you? You just computed it. I know you. I know you did. So let's go to, let's move on to question number two. <coughs> and, um, Again, we sum up the prices, we sum up the prices equal to 30 to 30 to 35 and to 40, 105. That's period T and then period T plus one. That's another sum, 32 plus 40 plus 45. When taking a look into the table, yes, that is that. And uh, the price index, as I said before, needs to be the price, the average price or the sum of prices or whatever, or a single price if we just look at one single, single security. It is 117, so the price of nowadays minus the price of the past, 105, divided by this price of the past, 105. That is that. And what did I want to say? I just wanted to make sure the computer stays alive. Please give me a second. Now, um, divided by 105, which is equal to 11%. So that is the answer to that question number two. <clears throat> um, 
Question number three. We don't want to look only at price value indexes, price weighted indexes, but of course, there's also other, other construction methods. For example, the equal weighting, for example, the market capitalization weighting. So there's different ones. And as we move on, as we move on to heavier ones, there is the value weighted index for these stocks E, F, and G in question number three. Question number three here. The number of shares, the price in period T of let's let's say now, and the price in the future, T plus one. So the next period, the following period. The value weighted index for these stocks, EFG, is best described as 12%, 12.5%, sorry, 13%, or 12.53%. So again, just compute it. We need to multiply the number of shares by the price, and we then need to compare, and that's it. So that's the whole story when it comes to a value weighted index. The whole story deals with the value as the price, as the name might give you just a first idea of what's inside. So as we see, the value weighted index is equal to the number of shares, a thousand times the price, 32. And then again, just uh, take a look at the others. So a 30,000 shares, times 30 plus 3,000 plus 3,000 shares times 35 plus, what was it? 6,000, 6,000 times 40, which is the price of period, of period uh, T and I should change a thousand, Thousand, uh, up, thousand times 40, I'm sorry, because we need, of course, we need to put period T plus one into the numerator. 3,000 times 40 plus 6,000 times 45. So period T plus one divided by period T equal to the price index that goes, that has a base period of T, of capital T, and a current period of now of T plus one. So divided by a numerator of a thousand times 30 plus 3,000 times 35 plus 6,000 times 40. And that is, I would say, 1.12533 equal to or leading to an index of 12%, of 12.533% which gives us the right answer, A. So A is the right answer, I'm sorry. Oh, oh my God, that's very close. That was, that was I was just, I just remembered 12.5, but answer C is closer. Answer C is even closer to this answer, um, answer A. So just be aware of that. This, this could happen in your CFA exam just as well so that the answers are just very near by each other. That was question three, and the answer to question three was and is C. That was the computation thing. <clears throat> that was the computation. Now talking about some verbal stuff. Question number four. When dealing with question number four, where was it? Dum, 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 here. Question number four, a price weighted index, such as the Dow Jones, Dow Jones Industrial Average, is best described as a geometric mean, an arithmetic mean of current prices, or an arith arithmetic mean of historic prices. What would you say? The thing is, geometric mean can be used only if we're talking about, like on a bank account, there is $1,000 now and 1000 $100 in one year, which means 10% rise. So if we go from 1,000 to 100 to 1,200, it's another percentage point, it's another percentage rise. So if we like multiply those rises and um, 
or you need to put one before the comma, we're talking about geometric means, and the geometric mean is just the average rise. It gives us the average rise. So the geometric mean can't be the right answer. The geometric mean is not the right answer. Um, the right answer, of course, to this question four is B. It is B. So the arithmetic mean of current prices is, um, or gives us the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That was question number four. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, again, talking about the divisor. Next question. Talking about the divisor. There are prices before the split and there are prices after the split. Prices before the split 40, 30, and 20, and 20, 30, and 30. So there are splits. And um, we need to compute the value as we did with uh, this question that I just invented several half an hour ago. So, what is it? We have 40, 30, and 20, the number, the sum of prices now before the split is equal to 90. Is equal to 90. Question number five. So, 40 plus 30 plus 20 is equal to 90. That's before the split. That is before the split. And if we divide by three, of course, we get an index, 90 divided by three equals 30. That's the result. Now, the next sum is 20 plus 30 plus 30, giving us 80, of course, 80. And now the question is, by which divisor do we need to, to divide in order to get the same price index? What would you say? What would you say here? And the answer is, so as I can just write it down again, we divide by D, not knowing the D, the exact, the exact uh, number, but we want to get 30. We want to get 30 just as well. So, the price index must not change, be it before the stock split or be it afterwards. By which number do we have to divide? And the answer, of course, is D has to be equal to 2.6, 2.67, if I may round it to two decimal places, which is C, which is the answer um, C. So that was that. Talking about construction methods, Talking about construction methods, it's always important to be able, of course, to be able to really calculate um, the price index. And of course, it's important to understand the meaning of the divisor. We need to divide by the divisor. So the divisor is the denominator. And some <clears throat> we need to divide the sum of prices by a given divisor in order to get the price index to get the index. And as we don't want to change the index when it comes to a stock split, then we have to change the divisor because the sum of prices divided by the divisor gives us the index, the index value. And so we just want to make sure the change of divisor leads to the same index. And that was that. So if you like this webinar, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up as we say in Facebook times, just um, tell others about it. If he didn't, just only tell us. And again, I want to make sure that uh, I told you about our webinar, our webinar that, uh, that is gonna take place in November, next one, November, 2018, the webinar that is gonna take place in order to help you prepare for your CFA level one exam for your CFA level one exam. And that is a five day webinar taking place in November, 2018, five days in a row. There is one webinar in English and one webinar in German. 
see more on that on Lambert Education, www.lamberteducation.com. And then click on the webinar, click on English minus webinar, just to see more details on that. So that was it. And, and I just want to make sure one thing, one, one different thing. Next week on Friday, the 2nd of November, Friday, the 2nd of November, 2018, we'll be dealing with the last webinar, with the last webinar of this series, and it's going to be derivatives. Yes, derivatives. There is so much to talk about derivatives. Um, European options, American options, call options, put options, and of course, binomial trees and fiduciary calls and so on and so on. I'm looking forward to this, to next Friday. Um, so make sure you enroll on Facebook or just by email to info at DanielMinesLambert.de. See you then. Um, see you then. I'm Daniel Lambert, Berlin. <laughs>